There's another use case here. This is very useful, this uh, skip locked. So in this case of skip lock, why do you need it? Imagine this use case that we have. We have a job queue, a job processing queue. We have this post table, everyone can write on the post table. It's a, it's a public forum, everyone can post there. And we want to prevent spams, a spam post. So that's why we have this status here, which can be, at first it's pending, you write something, it goes into the state of pending, and it's not displayed. Administrator can see it, but the rest cannot see it. And now we are submitting this post to a service and they, the service can decide whether this is uh, it's fine or it's spam. And then it um, sends us um, the response. But that service costs money and we don't want to pay more than necessary. So we need a way to coordinate and only send those uh, posts using multiple threads, of course. We need to make sure that we don't send the same post over and over and be charged more validating the same post. And uh, how we can do that? We have an example here. It's called uh, skip locked. And here you can see this use case that I was telling you about. This, we have this post that has this status, right? And this one can be pending, approved and spam. So what we have in the database, we have currently, we have 10 entries in the status of pending and we want to validate those. We don't want to display them, they are impending, meaning that they are hidden from the public uh, user and we want to validate them. So we would send them to some external service that cost us money. Now, what would happen without skip locked? You would go and uh, you would get some posts, a number of posts. We can order them by the ID, take only two of them and we lock them using pessimistic write. And what would happen? The first transaction, that would be Alice in this case, the first transaction would be able to get the first two records. And then the, every other transaction, we want to do this using multiple concurrent threads, every other transaction will block. We can see this is uh, the main thread here, and this one works. And then when you have the second transaction running, this is a different thread in this execute sync, this one, because it will try to execute the lock in the same order. This one will fail because it cannot take the lock. It's going to get the lock timeout exception because it cannot take the lock. Either it blocks or in our case, we don't block because we're using this no wait. So what would make us difficult to implement this? People think about adding some, a new state and then you have to commit like in processing, you have to commit it. If the process breaks, you'll have to revert it. You need a timeout. So it's complicated. We don't want to make it more complicated than necessary if you have support and all these databases have support for this skip lock. So look how nicely this feature is because most likely that you have bumped onto this problem before. It's very common. So what we need to do, we have multiple threads, each one trying to, to lock some records in the same time. So the first one is Alice and she gets the first two records. She, she gets the first two records, one and two. Now you have a different thread in this execute sync. We are using, uh, we have an executor service and now we have a different transaction, a concurrent transaction, Bob. And Bob is going to take the next two. They execute the same query actually. And he will skip over the records that were, that were, uh, um, locked by Alice and he gets the next two in line. In fact, we can take this query that was executed. We'll take this query. We'll go to Postgres. And now we're going to be the third transaction. Now let's refresh the tables here. And we'll open the console. So let's first try to take and see the tables there. Let's go here and select all from post. First of all, let's see the table. You have this pending. So this is what we have. We can see that uh, we have these records and this is the query that got executed. I'm going to copy paste this query and let's put this, let's comment these parameters here. Let's uh, 
beautify it a little bit and let's replace the placeholders with actual values and uh, limit and then we have the for update and then we have the skip locked and let's change this let's take in this is the third transaction actually because we have alice bob and this one and let, here let's take four let's take four of those records so we're going to skip over alice we're going to skip over bob and this uh the third thread is going to take uh, records five six seven and eight and now comes the interesting part let's change this so let's make bob fail we're going to go here make this one null force it to be null and now of course when this one is evaluated this line gets evaluated here it's going to throw an null pointer exception it's going to roll back and by rolling back now bob released his locks on those two records so it means that another transaction can do this they can run and they can take back the records that were released and they couldn't be processed by bob so why it's important to know about this key blocked because you can use a table as a job processing queue and have multiple worker threads that they can coordinate and they can take work from that queue do the work they can take like task from that queue and uh, process them and in the end uh, um, update uh, update them or say that they were finished so that's how you can implement this task this is a very common uh, goal if you have this task where you need to coordinate work using a database table using skip lock this uh, is a great uh, thing to do if you like this video you are going to love my high performance sql video course for more details, go to my blog, blagnihalcha.com, and check out the courses page. If you're struggling with data access performance issues, this video course will teach you how to get the most out of your relational database. You have unlimited access to the course material and 14 days money back warranty. If you are curious what other people think about the video course lessons, then you should definitely read the testimonials I got from my students. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy running your data access layer at high speeds.